Hello and welcome to the next episode of the Hub World Podcast. My name is Jules from the Hub World and today I'm joined by... Matteo from the Hub World. And Gino. Um, today we're going to be trying out a new kind of sub-series within the podcast. We're not sure what we're calling it yet, but um, for now we'll say Console Essentials. And the um, the concept behind it is we're going to take a console. We are going to talk about what we each think the most essential games on that console are. We're going to debate. We're going to share opinions. And by the end, what we want to do is we want to come up with what we think the top five most essential games on that console are. Um, but just to clarify, we will not be ranking those top five. We will not be saying what the best one is, what um, the the fifth one is. We're, we're just going to give you a list of five games we think are like, these are the five games on that console you have to play um, based off the opinions that we share. Um, and yeah, we're going to kind of go from there. So yeah, I think this is a cool idea. Yeah, I think it'll it'll be fun. So to to start things off, um, we thought we'd do the grandfather of all video game systems, not the Atari, which to me is not the grandfather. That's like the the great old. grandfather. I don't even know if that's a great grandfather. I th- I feel like that's the like the uncle the savior, who's kind of wacky. The savior, the console that saved the video game industry, will be the one we'll be sure. About but today. it didn't have children. It had no children. Yeah. It just yeah. it saved the industry, but had no children. Um, but we're going to do the grandfather, which is um, no. I'm saying the, the N- N- I'm saying the NES is the one that saved the industry, not the Atari. Oh. Atari almost ruined the industry. Oh, okay. There we go. Okay, yeah. there, there you very go. different. Okay. Yeah. Well, the well, if you haven't guessed yet, we're doing the the NES, the Nintendo Entertainment System in Japan, in Japan, also known as the Famicom. Um, we will break that down, talk about some of our favorite uh, games on those consoles, and then uh, hash it out and debate and argue and spite each other and negotiate on which are the best five. So um, the floor is open for anybody who would like to share a game that they think is deserving of the title a central game on the Nintendo under set ten the Nintendo Entertainment System library. Well uh I'll start. I think we should just get the most obvious one out of the way. So if the yeah. NES is the console that saved the game industry, then the game the single game that saved the gaming industry is Super Mario Bros. And I still think Super Mario Bros is among uh, it's definitely among the best games on the system. It still holds up today rather well. It's the most probably the most iconic video game ever made. Uh, the difficulty, like the, the the fact that like you know there's no save system or anything in the game. Like it, there's a good challenge to be had with Super Mario Bros. Still to this day. Um, and just I remember just I have so many. Everyone has so many fond memories of playing this game. Like. World 1-1 one, one is super iconic. The Mario theme, the Koji Kondo's score for that game is fantastic. There's just so... Like, that game literally is... like the, the one word I would use is iconic. I've said it so many times already, but like that is what that game is. And it's just... It's a, it's a timeless classic. It just You can't go wrong with Super Mario Bros. So, if anyone else wants to add something to that, like, uh, it's... Um, Um, I have a hot take, but I don't know if I should bring this up later when we're negotiating. I think right now we should just share. I'll bring up the hot take after. All right. I'll bring up the hot take after. I think another very essential game on the console is Super Mario Bros. 3, which took the concept of Super Mario Bros. and um, took it to, like, its highest potential by including a lot of the things we see today, such as um, power-ups, um that lasts like throughout levels that you carry over the world map, um, the introducing characters like the Koopalings and um, giving more character to characters like princess toadstool and uh, the toads and boom, boom, and even Bowser to an extent. I think super Mario bros three is worth mentioning. Mm-hmm. Super Mario bros three is, like once again, like it's another one of those games that like people say like is like 
potentially one of the greatest like 2D platformers ever made, like even to this day. Yeah, I I agree. Well, we've talked about Super Mario Bros. One and Super Mario Bros. Three. Maybe Gino can share a game that he thinks is on the essentials list. Well, the original Legend of Zelda does have a. Um, I would have to say, like you have to, you do have to play it to understand where the series really came from. Um, I'd consider it essential just because it's what spawned the the next thirty five years worth of content. Without the original Legend of Zelda, with it being okay, like you're spawning into this world. There's a cave. There's an enemy. You go into the cave. You you have to discover everything by yourself. There's no narrative structure to what to do. And the old man just says, "It's dangerous to go alone. Take this." Gives you a sword, and you just gotta kind of figure it out. Right, it kind of set. Yeah, it, it was. It was kind of like the first open world, albeit you could only go north, say. south, east, or west. Mm-hmm. And yeah, with with like it really gave players that grand sense of adventure. And yeah, it was a little bit limited by what it could do, just based on the hardware at the time, right? Like what, like in the, it, it's an open world game in 1986. Like what else, like could you possibly do with it? It was just I don't know. It set so many, like it. It set the stage for just so many series norms. Like you have your, you have your music. You had the collection of items. You have, oh gosh, like you have your dungeons, no. your bosses. Yeah, no. and it was kind of like one of the first big adventure games on that scale, and too. it had a save system. Exactly, that's what I was about to say. Like I don't know for sure if it was like the first game ever. Like first console game to ever ha- have a, a save system, but it was for a sure I think the first Nintendo game. It was have... a traditional save system with uh, without yeah. the use of passcodes or cheat codes to warp yourself to yeah another portion. Like there was a game. battery in the cartridge dedicated to like saving your your file. So let's not fail to mention as well. Like I again, like I don't know the history on this, but it had to have been one of the first games ever to feature something like New Game Plus, where upon completing the game and starting it up again, you actually get a different adventure, right? Huh. No, I didn't know that. Well, sorry, I, maybe it wasn't that. I think it it wasn't New Game Plus. It was um, if you put the character's name as Zelda, I think the the game was different or altered, but it had like an alternate version of events. Like there, there is an alternate way to play it. I'll, uh, I'll pitch in another game here. I think another easy essential game for NES I, that I still think holds up today is uh, Dr. Mario. Now, Dr. Mario also, I think, released simultaneously or around the same time on the original Game Boy, but I think the NES version is the definitive version of that game. It's a fun, like I think, like the the multiplayer in that game is fantastic. The uh, just the the Doctor Mario theme is just so catchy and just it just I just remember playing on our cousin's NES because like Gino and I never owned an NES growing up, but like Doctor Mario was one of the games that we played all the time, and just out we spent hours just playing like one against one Doctor Mario and like it's. It's so simple. It's, but it's, it's just it's such good fun and like, there's a reason why the series is stuck around. Like, it's one of the one of the like it's I think it's one of the oldest Mario spinoffs and it's still getting games today. Like, you know, say what you want about the mobile game, but like my mom plays the Doctor Mario mobile game, oh, and it's been it. re-released on like every Nintendo system where NES games are available. It's there. And like, just I'm sure, like everyone, everyone knows Doctor Mario. Like, it's Doctor Mario is just it's to this day. Like I said, it's just it's just as playable as it was when it came out. It's a fantastic game. Yeah, I never would have thought to put that on like Doctor Mario on like a definitive NES game. I thought like you may have like you like you probably were going to go like the rounds of like Duck Hunt or something, right? Because like now that. But like this is uh, the thing. I had that one on my list. The yeah. reason I'm I'm picking my games strategically, like the games I'm picking are ones I still think are just as good now as they were when they came out. Yeah. Back when Duck they, Hunt back still in the good. NES era. But like Duck Hunt isn't as accessible yeah, anymore. You like need, you, need you, need that, you need a CRT TV. And then the Wii right? remake 
with the pointer kind of like took the skill out of it. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's why, like, I'm I'm picking my I, I'm 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 being pretty pretty biased with my games. Like now, like the next few I'm gonna recommend are gonna be like probably no one's gonna recommend them. But yeah. Well, that's yeah. The fun let's, of it. Okay, let's let's go on because like, you can't have an NES list without Duck Hunt. Like, yeah, be, I agree. Okay, let's assume that you have like a television that supports the. Um, the but Zapper why should Pearl it matter Pearl, right? if you have a television that supports it? Like, even if you don't. Well, like it it's for doesn't... it's for the next generation of people, right? Like, if you don't have a CRT. Oh, you I see. Because we're recommending the essentials. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Fair enough. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. so I'd consider Duck Hunt an essential game, but it's getting progressively harder and harder to yes. to play it because you don't have that CRT TV. It's um, it was a bit, it's a bit tricky. For, like it, it confuses the system, so you can't really play it anymore. But like, gosh, the OG Duck Hunt, you got your, it had like three mini games in it. You had your two player mode. You had the disc shoot and just that damn dog, <laughs> just giggling touch the screen of the tv with the zapper and that's how you play duck hunt but yeah like just just being able to sit back and it's like that's a classic arcade experience that i find translated really 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 well and it's just so much we had so much fun with it it's and so fun it was it's, my it's first one, it was, game it's simple it's satisfying and it requ and like if you practiced enough at it you actually could get better and it wasn't like memorizing yeah. the goomba or the the enemy placement in Super Mario Bros. or like Legend of Zelda, like you couldn't memorize patterns and things. Like, okay, you had like the duck would just fly around wherever it was, and you had to like actually coordinate yourself to it. So you could practice. It was also one of those games too that was like fun for everybody, right? Like grandpa could come over, or like your mom would play it because it's just like it's so simple yet so satisfying. Like it, it was just such a cool concept. And hey, we were the original fans. Of Duck Hunt Dog being put into Smash Bros. <laughs> we used to say it as a joke, but like when it actually happened, we weren't like upset. Like we sense. were like, "Wow, no. it actually I happened." Fired. I I do think that Mateo does bring up a good point, though. That while it's definitely worth mentioning, and it's definitely probably one of the most notable games from that era. If the purpose of this list of this top five essentials is for you as the, the listeners and the viewers to go out and play these five games that may affect our um, decision in whether we include duck hunt within the top five or not yeah. um, because ultimately the wii version of duck hunt is not the same experience yeah mm -hmm. it's easy mode yeah no, no. um well i have one to to suggest um uh -huh. So we've almost hit all of mine, actually, already. But one that I really wanted to suggest, which is a different genre than everything we've looked at so far, um, but a game that I think is so fun and worth mentioning is whichever version you want to do it, either Mike Tyson's or featuring Mr. Dream, Punch-Out! on the NES was a fantastic game. Um, I love playing is like little mac and just like it it's like a timing based game that's also about like learning um like it's a trial and error game right like you're supposed to lose you're supposed to go in you're, and learn the timing figure out like what you're supposed to do to fight each opponent and then get better and get better and get better and it's a game all about that trial and error um and it's not really like i at least i find like while it's a tough game, I feel like it's easier for um, the average player to kind of get into it because um, I find that like what what a lot of uh, casual people have a hard time doing is like getting like finger and like moving controls going. Whereas like with Punch Out, it's not really about that. It's not like you're not not worried. You don't have to worry about moving or like distance of like jumps and things like that it's literally just about timing it's left or right dodging up and down um for like ducking punching like at the right time and just recognizing patterns and it's it's a good game and it has a wacky cast of characters um even mike tyson is is a wacky character in that in the game and later on when they replaced him with mr dream it was still still cool and um 
Yeah. Punch Out's a really solid pick. Like Punch Out is like I would like like with Mario and with Duck Hunt, like that's one of those games that's just like a d- console defining game and it's like there really isn't anything like it. Like Nintendo doesn't have another game in their catalog quite like like Rhythm Heaven could be close or like WarioWare because like they're they are like like I consider Punch Out kind of like a rhythm game too. So like that's why I would compare it to those. But it's more reactionary uh, though. Yeah, Punch Out's about knowing patterns and stuff like that, as Jewel said. So like it's it is very unique, and uh, I would it's a definite like that's probably a shoe in I would say. But um, Gino, do you have another one? Uh, or I'm I'm just trying to think because like like. You have the original Metroid. We played a lot of Blades of Steel. That, that was that's actually on my list. Yeah, you can Blades talk of about Steel. it if you want, though. It wasn't it wasn't the Nintendo brand of ice hockey, but like, hey, we live in Canada. We got to play a hockey game, and it's the best hockey game on the NES. It's better. It's yeah. made by Konami, actually. Blades of Steel. I think the main thing for me, like that that or well, we weren't alive when these games came out, but like, yeah. Uh, the reason why I preferred Blades of Steel over Ice Hockey was that, like, Blades of Steel actually had, like, names of, like, NHL teams or the NHL cities in it, where Ice Hockey was country-based. The sound effects were better than Ice Hockey, I felt. it, And, like, it was, it was very arcade which was really good. And, you know, like, you could fight in that game. Like, there was, there was a, it, it was, it, you couldn't make a realistic hockey game back then, but... At it, at the time, it that was as realistic as it was gonna get, but uh, and like it's still fun to play Blades of Steel today. Like I, like I actually it's played it with my play, cousin. Like, Mobile. Yeah, it's 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 I I would say the enjoyment of it's very relatable to Tech Mobile. I just I just think Blade, Blades of Steel is my in my opinion is the best sports game on the the NES. Is it the most notable game? Most recognizable? No. But it's definitely if you play it, even you don't have to be a fan of hockey to have a good time with Blades of Steel. Yeah. What about Kirby? That's the uh, that's the last game I had written down. I'll I kind of want to talk about Kirby, but uh, Go ahead. Kirby's Adventure, I think, like so. Kirby's Adventure is actually a pretty important game for for multiple reasons. Like I think Kirby's Adventure yeah. may have been the final first party game released on. Or one of the final first-party games released on NES, but it was so I think it also came the... out while the SNES was out. Yeah, it, I think there was overlap, um, and but it was also I think the first Kirby game in which Kirby could actually copy abilities yeah, of enemies. Was. It created the copyability. And, yeah, and um, I remember like my first time playing Kirby's Adventure was on the Wii Virtual Console. Um, where I, I mistaken, I thought it was I thought I was buying Kirby's Dreamland three, but I actually bought Kirby's Adventure, and I was a little disappointed at the time. But when I actually played Kirby's Adventure, I really enjoyed it, and I replayed it on um, on the NES Classic, and it's you know it's a short game, but it's still really really fun. It introduced a lot of the like the the fan favorite like copy abilities. Mechanics. Yeah, like that is that. Copying enemy abilities is the main thing people associate with Kirby. Like the main thing, or at least the main thing I associate with him. And that was a first Kirby's, in this game. Kirby sucks uh, up enemies and steals their powers. Yeah, like the first Kirby game on Game Boy, all you Kirby could do was just inhale and spit. By adding the copy mechanic, it just added an extra layer. Like it, that was like the, the, the last piece of the puzzle of that, the, the Kirby formula. Like I'm sure. Kirby's Adventure or Kirby's Dreamland One was fine, but I that to me like uh, that seems super boring just to not have it, that it there. Was, like, it, it was it was pretty think, boring. I remember playing it. You would it. think, yeah, like you'd think that Kirby had this copy ability from day it one. Get go right. Yeah, but um, yeah, and I just remember the music was really good in that game. The uh, all the, the different worlds and everything. You had a wide variety. I like the world map. I don't know boss if... fights. Yeah, I don't know if the world map was in Kirby's Dream Line, but I just remember the way, like when Kirby unlocked new levels. I just remember it was like a mini cutscene. Yeah, and like the world around, like something would like 
Kirby's warp star would like hit into the 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 world's the world map and like areas would like it it, it kind of felt like the way the Mario World map kind of opened up. It seemed like that was the game that really pushed the hardware. I think it's probably one of the best two D platformers on the system. That yeah. might be a very unpopular opinion, but no, you're I honestly I forgot to put that on my list and. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's uh it's a big one. Mm-hmm. Um well, I have one more to mention. I don't think you two can necessarily relate, but I think it's worth mentioning. Um I'm also mentioning this on behalf of Riley, um who wasn't able to join us tonight, but um you can't really mention the NES without mentioning um Mega Man, which was an incredibly influential and important platformer from that era. I think there were on NES, how many Mega Man games? I think were it was there? five or six. Five or six of them. I think there it was quite six. a few. And they they are very important platformers because they're they're very different than Mario, um, or something like Kirby. Um, they really stressed this idea of difficult, like high difficulty, um, and mm-hmm. they merged kind of like this shooting gameplay with, um with the nature of platforming um and after discussing it with riley we kind of decided that the one we we would want to take to an essentials list um we debated between Mega Man 2 and Mega Man 3 which we we said were easily the best ones but we ultimately settled on Mega Man 3 as our favorite one um in part due to the music and the characters and the story um and just overall the power-ups but yeah, just Mega Man in general. Um, it's hard to not talk about it when you talk about the NES era. It's it's not a Nintendo game, although Mega Man now is starting to be more associated with Nintendo. But um, it's just a different kind of the, platformer, right? Yeah, I honestly was kind of and, hung up on like the official first party stuff because that's what a lot of the stuff, aside from like Blades of Steel, like Mateo and I played growing up, or at least like emulated on our computer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah e- even yeah and that, i think that's the same with me but i think there's also a reason for that right like i think a lot of the better games did come from third-party companies and while there were pretty significant ones that came from um third-party companies as well i think Mega Man is one of those ones that just like stands out right like yeah uh, like the... like Mega Man was just as much of an icon yeah like Mega Man, the Mega Man series is probably one of like the biggest um like series i've actually never really gotten into i refer to this all the time like as like like and within our friend group like the wii u era is like the or like that especially like that time i think it was like new super mario bros came out there was like the the four new super mario bros games donkey Kong country tropical freeze uh shovel knight like all these like freedom planet all these big uh 2D platformers came out. I bought all of them and never played any of them. Like I just got so fatigued with the the whole genre that like it, it took me a real. It's like to this day I'm still like I just can't get into 2D platformers anymore. And I know how influential and important Mega Man is. It's just like maybe if I would have played it earlier, I would be really attached to it. But like I I it's still something I might one day go go back and play. But yeah, um, yeah yep. Mega Man is like definitely like that's something I can I can agree with you there. Yeah. Uh, and like yeah. I just remember like there was Castlevania games that were on uh, NES, but like I don't think any of us have played them. No. Yeah. No yeah. Castlevania though, like I still feel like for a recommendations list, like I know Adriano would be able to talk talk about this because he played he played yeah. for all of them. I think three and... is the one everyone says is the best one. Th- and isn't yes. it four? I thought it was the one with no, Simon. Four, four, I think, is Super Nintendo. Oh, um, yeah, yes. No, that yeah. is Super Nintendo, but that's... What, okay. Yeah, I think Castlevania one or three are the ones that are the ones that people say are the best on on yeah. the NES. Castlevania one had a lot of really good memories and stuff from uh, mm-hmm. from what I'm like, from what I remember. Um, yeah, like we, we also, played, like, like we played yeah, make, Castlevania, like, the... but like we only huh? played through the first level of the first game because like we were yeah. kids and we sucked. So, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah. 
Fall. What about what about the first Final Fantasy game? Final Fantasy One. I mean, I personally, while like, it's a very, it's that, a right? very it's important like... game, Final Fantasy One, but it's also very difficult to go back to. Um, like, I mean, I'm not gonna say I don't recommend it, but I'm also not gonna say I do. Yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But no, that's actually, and that's now. Me. Now I'm thinking of all the the third party stuff. There was a lot of third party, but yeah, like. But you have to remember, like the NES was very similar to the Wii, the Wii era. Like it's a system a lot of people owned, but a lot of companies made games on that system, and a lot of companies made bad games on that system. Yeah, yeah. Like, there was so many like shovelware games, like bad movie tie-in games that came out on on NES. But like, there's still a lot of good ones, like. Yeah. I remember Batman was good, Ninja Turtles was good, uh, like even this... like there were so many fun, like but like 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 I even like Tiny Toons Adventures on on NES. Tiny Toons, but oh, like, or it was on Super Nintendo. The morning know, cartoon like, games. What about Ducktales? Well, yeah, like Ducktales is really good, but like I wouldn't put Ducktales in the same level as Super Mario Bros. Three, right? Like that's the thing. Like if we're gonna make an essentials list, then maybe like. I think now we should actually, like, maybe, like, if no one else has any, like, games that they really want to recommend, like, I think when you go in, like, I want to move into the, the actual, what like, about Excite Bike? or whatever. Well, that's the thing, is, I think there's a lot of games to to bring up when talking about the NES, but I think, ultimately, like, we are talking about what we feel are the essentials, and I think it's very clear, like, this is what we feel, and I think one of the, the, um, the fallacies of making lists or m- recommending things when you don't just use your own experience is that sure we can recommend something like Castlevania or Final Fantasy One, but ultimately, while those things might be essentials, and I'm sure other people would recommend them, we as a group uh, at the Hub World, we can't really yeah. speak to it. So something like like going off somebody's word is sometimes easier to do than going off our own experiences, right? Sometimes it's easy mm-hmm. to be like, oh, well, somebody said Final Fantasy 1 was uh, incredible, so therefore we should mention it, even yeah. though we have these very valid experiences. So I think, just for the purpose I of this... Re- like, I do I... remember playing Final Fantasy 1 a bit, though, but I couldn't really get past like the first area, just because, yeah. Like, yeah. as a kid with a very short attention span, mm-hmm. I, I just couldn't do it. Yeah, and, I think and that's that... fair. Yeah, and I, I think, think we just this... need to go off our own experiences, right? Like, this yeah, is the hub I... worlds. Yeah. yeah. And I think, though, like, NES is, like, the only system in which this will apply to. But, like, it was none, like, we weren't, we weren't the right age for that system. Like, we weren't, or yeah. we weren't even born yet. Like, we, yes. we, we, that, we went back to play those games. Whereas yeah, everything exactly. that's come since we've was kind played of either ours. when they were like that was like the like yeah we that the was relevant, relevant when we came out yes so, exactly when, when we started when we were we we started playing like, games so, I I don't know about you guys I don't like technically my first system was an NES but all I had on it was Super yeah. Mario Bros One Duck Hunt but like my first real system that was like mine was Super Nintendo. And it was at the time yeah. the N64 was out, but I remember asking my dad to get me a Super Nintendo because I saw the Lion King game and I really wanted it. Um, mm-hmm. So, like, that, yeah, I agree with you. Like, this one is... There's going to be some bias that's that that's very evident in our lists because it's very based off what we chose to go back and play and what we had mm-hmm. the attention span for. But that's okay. Like, our our listeners and our viewers know that this is our opinions and it's not the be all end all we're not saying don't go out yeah. and seek other games we're saying these are the ones that we suggest yeah so that being said why don't we move on until ranking what our five essentials are so we've we've actually suggested nine games here mm-hmm. um so we're gonna we're gonna chop that down a little for all of you at home and we're gonna tell you why as we kind of do this process ourselves but um just to reiterate, in case you guys want to write them down, um, so you have mm-hmm. them on your end, as the, the nine games we've mentioned are Super Mario Bros., Super Mario Bros. 3, The Legend of Zelda, Dr. Mario, Duck Hunt, Punch-Out!, 
Blades of Steel, Kirby's Adventure, and Mega Man 3. I think the one game that we can all agree on, for sure, well, two. is Super Mario Bros. 3. Well, here, I think we should... I think that's going to warrant a longer discussion, to be honest. I Really? I think we should start by, like, let's remove what we know yeah. is not in our essentials list. Um, and I think just for the purpose of what Mateo said earlier, I do think we should just remove Duck Hunt. Just because, not that we're not saying it's influential or important to the NES, but if we're telling you at home to go try these games, I cannot in good conscience ask somebody to go find um, a CRT <laughs> a CRT, <laughs> or to play the Wii version of the game because it's just not the... It's, it's just not sustainable it's not so the same I, experience so why don't we just remove duck hunt let's say like we, let's like make it our honorable mention and let's say like duck hunt all of you at home if you can get your hands on a CRT TV, it, crt tv or if you own one um and you have an nes or you have access to an nes definitely try out duck hunt if you can get the peripheral and everything um but we also understand that that experience is something that may also be um, a relic of the past that's very hard to to actually engage with. And I don't know if I would tell you to go fork out hundreds of dollars. I don't know if Duck Hunt's worth forking out hundreds of dollars on a CRT and finding the, the game cart and the zapper. And like, I don't know if it's worth that much. Yeah. But it was definitely something fun. Yeah. And if you do, if you do have the ability to do it, definitely do it. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. But that's fair. Okay. That leaves us with eight. I think um, we can knock off Blades of Steel just because, like, okay, it's a sports game. And... Blades of Steel is, like, very much, like, Gino and I's, like, super random, like, if you want to check out a good sports game, that's Blades of Steel. But I also don't think Blades of Steel has been re-released. It's not super accessible right now, so it's very similar to Duck Hunt. Okay, like, well, let's remove that then. Yeah. And then we'll be left with seven. Um, now, here's the thing that I want to consider. I want us all to consider when making this list of five. If we are saying these are the five most essential, um, we should consider um, list composition in the sense that it doesn't make sense for all five of the games to be platformers, right? Like, we should probably have some variety within reason. Within reason. I don't think we should shoot out a game that deserves to be there more than another game just because of the genre. So like, but we should also consider that when making this list. Um, okay, so we have seven games. We have Super Mario Bros., Super Mario Bros. 3, Legend of Zelda, Dr. Mario, Punch-Out!, Kirby's Adventure, and Mega Man 3. Um, so we're going to try and boil that down to five for you. Um, mm. I'll give you my now, hot take from before. Honestly, but... all right. Unpopular opinion. I think we should only have one of the Marios on That's the list. That's my pop. I agree. Yep. And it has to be the, f you, you got to keep the first one because that's what started. And see, it. that's my hot take. I don't think it should be the first one. Really? Really? I think if... what, based on what you said earlier, we're like, you want to have, uh, like diversity, but in some cases, Mario you can't one have is that. The most and I think, I think, Super Mario Bros. and Super Mario Bros. 3 are the exception. Like, both of those games, I think, need to be on the list. I disagree with you wholeheartedly. I think I think if you're going to recommend a list of five games for one console, I don't think recommending two games from the exact same series, unless they are, like, vastly, vastly different, is is an option, especially on a list this heavy with platformers yeah. already. Like, if we were talking like, Mario to Mario 2, I would consider Mario 2 more of a spin-off. Because it wasn't even... It wasn't even a Mario if, game originally. It was Doki yeah. Doki Panic that they reskinned here. Right? It's Mario 3 my, really yeah. is Mario 2. Yeah, and, well, it, yeah, and that's the thing, is, like, I... I look at the list, I'm just, like, like looking at these games, I can't in good conscience say that both of those games, like, me saying you like you as a reader or a viewer or whatever need to play both of these. I think you need to play one of the Mario Bros. games. And in and it my opinion, one. it should. In my opinion, it <laughs> should be three. Yeah, well, three and that was my hot take. The better game. That was my hot take from before. Is that 
I think that three deserves to be on the list more than one because as much as one is, of course, the grandfather of the platformer, like one of the most important games of all time, ultimately, I think if you miss out on Super Mario Bros. 3, you're just not doing yourself a favor. Yeah. Like, like, most I people haven't even beat Super Mario Bros. 1. Yeah. Well, Mario... Well, in recent years, I know Mario Bros. 1 has gotten a lot more love. Especially with the 30th yeah, that, anniversary. Yeah, that game is Mario literally on, like, every platform. Like, yeah, every Nintendo like Mario platform. 1 has been... It's, it's everywhere. It's super easily accessible. You can get it on your... You can get it on your Switch. You can get it on your Wii U if you have it there. You can get it on the Wii. You, you get can it get as it... Game & Watch. Yeah, you have it on the Game & Watch version of it. You can get it on all the DSs. And if we're just talking like, okay, if you have an NES and you have the OG software, right? It was also in the combo pack with Duck Hunt. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. every game, every console after a certain period of time, came with that combo pack. You didn't have to buy the Super Mario Bros. game by itself. I actually think it's harder to find the original Mario, Super Mario Bros. cartridge by itself outside of the Mario Bros. Duck Hunt. Yeah. Like the two-in-one. Like Jules, They sold it by itself. They re-released it on its, own con- on its own original console. Mario Bros. 3 only ever had the one version of the game out. Right? And it wasn't as widely reproduced. So if we're talking about like pure ease of access and finding it, right? Um, I don't think either of those games. There's that much. I don't intend like the reason why Cut Blades of Steel was like you can't play it. It's not easy to play anywhere. All yeah, these I other think games we've mentioned on this uh, yeah. list that are here yeah. are playable on easily like, accessible. Yeah, yeah. Like, I don't I think, think it's you a could point. Play all like, of them on Switch right now yeah. if you wanted yeah. to. But and Mario Bros. Duck don't... Hunt could be the one game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, and that's the, but where yeah, I think I like, you mean. yeah, like Mario. That's where Mario accessibility 3. ends, right? Just because Super Mario Bros. It's clearly way more accessible than Super Mario Bros. Three. Ultimately, yeah. if you want to play either of these games, you can't. I just wanted to say yeah. that because I because I remembered that it came on the combo pack. So technically, we could sneak Duck Hunt in here without sneaking well, Duck well, Hunt no. in here. You can sneak no. Mario Bros. onto the honorable mentions with Duck Hunt on the same yeah. card. You can say. Super yeah. Mario Bros. Duck Hunt is yeah. the honorable mentions. Bye. But um, what yeah, I will I'm fine say with though, that, but I'm here's fine the thing: I, is I also have a, as much as since this is the other thing, I'm going to counterpoint myself because that's what I do. As much as I also think Super Mario Bros. Three is more essential, again looking at list composition, when I look at the other platformers that we have on the list, Super Mario Bros. is one is much is way more is way more differentiated from something like Mega Man 3 and Kirby's Adventure than Super Mario Bros 3 is because Super Mario Bros 3 falls into that like world map level progression kind of like power up based um kind of like pseudo complicated like newer NES um platforming experience whereas like Super Mario Bros 1 was at its core literally just about the jumping so it's also like you also have to think about it in that way i'm honestly fine with mario bros being taken off like super mario bros one being taken off so we have six games left now we have six games so if we look at the next one on the list is the legend of zelda which i'm sure we can all unanimously agree probably has to be here it's it's essentially its own genre well Um, it's the only adventure game here um it's my least favorite game out of the six that are on here, to be brutally honest with you. Like, I don't think that game... I would never recommend Zelda 1 to anyone that isn't a Zelda fan, to be honest with you. Really? And even, yeah. And I'm a Zelda fan. I'm a big Zelda fan. I'm not the biggest Zelda fan in the podcast, but... Yeah. I wouldn't even... Re- I Honestly, I would never play Zelda 1. I can't play that game. Hey, like, I don't you are you lucky. I don't recommend that. You are lucky I didn't push for Zelda 2. Well, I would because be even I more angry. Zelda Two. I, Zelda Two is more I, like. Mega I would Man, be though. even more like adamant against Zelda Two, but like I just don't think Zelda One isn't. I just don't think it plain like I've never played Mega Man Three, but I see the appeal of that game, and like it's an action platformer. Mario Three, anyone can play that game. It's super accessible to anyone. Punch Out, 
scratches a specific itch and it's still playable today. And same thing with Dr. Mario. And Kirby is just like, I think Kirby is a fantastic 2D platformer, also very similar to Mario 3. Zelda 1, I mean, like, you're going to get lost in the, uh, someone that has never played games before or that's new to playing games or is a, a rookie, whatever. We'll they're going to need. need I get frustrated and I play a lot of games. Like I, I just can't get into that game. It's just too complicated. Like the nothing is explained and everything looks the same. Like it's, I'm sure some people, a lot of people are like the difficulty might be a little bit unfair. Someone's bashing some their head against their computer screen right like, now, listening to you, Mateo. Oh, well, I know. And, and that's <laughs> my hot take. Honestly, like I don't think the NES Zelda games are good. Like that's just, I just or not good, sorry. Mm. Like I, I got to differentiate. But like I, they're they're good, but they're not. Uh, they're not. They're not like these timeless classics that the Mario Bros. games on NES are like. I just and that's fair. Like, there's there's I a can... lot of flaws with those with the design that makes it really, uh, like really difficult to for for newer players or for anyone that hasn't played that. Like if, if you were to tell me, oh. What Zelda game? What Mario games would you recommend me play? I would honestly recommend people Super Mario Bros. Three, even to this day. Like compared to modern Mario games, or whatever, I would never recommend anyone that hasn't played a Zelda game to play Zelda One. And that's a fair argument, and I can understand that argument because I, as a very big Zelda guy, um, agree. Like when I, when I do my um semi-annual um, playthroughs of the Zelda series and I always rearrange my ranking the original Zelda always ranks within the lower half, usually within the lower third of the game, so you're right, like, in that sense it doesn't hold up with modern games, like the, I I think the, the original Super Mario Bros, like, even if you didn't grow up in that era you can go back and appreciate those games, whereas the original Zelda, Legend of Zelda, unless you have an attachment to it, it's harder to go back and and like actually appreciate it for what it is. Although it is a very good game, and the other thing, we, like we talked about, all those influential pieces of it, like having the save system. But I guess those don't really matter when we're when we're recommending these games now, because like sure, it was influential, it was important, but like if we're telling people to go back and play these games, like like you as a modern gamer should go back and try these games. Like maybe you're right. Maybe the original Legend of Zelda isn't worth somebody going back to play. But then the other the other thing is at the same time, if you're gonna recommend people to go back and play games now, is it worth it to go back and play the first Dr. Mario when the newer Dr. Marios are the same game but way more refined and better, with better controls, more options and I like mean, way more Dr. Refined. Mario really hasn't changed, though. Like, that's the thing. Yeah, it's like, still, it, like, put four but it has. color together. But Not it has really. changed like, in the sense that, like, the product... Like, but that's what I mean, is, like, sure, the gameplay hasn't changed. You're right. But, like, the production value has changed. So why would, like, why would I recommend to somebody nowadays, you have to play Dr. Mario NES when I could just say, go play Dr. Mario on your phone? Which is no, the no, same no, game, the phone but one's way better quality. Different. The phone okay, one's not the very, phone very one. different. Okay, okay, fine. Not the phone one, but go play Dr. Luigi or go play Dr. Mario whatever on, on Switch or on, on Wii U or whatever like the most recent one is because ultimately is the is while it was the first Dr. Mario game, like it's it's it kinda in the same boat as Zelda. Like why would you go back and play that version of it when there's better versions of it now? Like, it doesn't really hold... Like, there's no reason, especially because it hasn't changed at all. Like, there's nothing unique about that experience other than the fact that it's older graphics and it was the first one. The novelty there's of this was special where about the 8-bit art style and the 8-bit music and things, right? That's sure. why I would go back to play Dr. Mario it's 1. It's the charm. Like, like, 64... Like, Dr. Mario 64 has never been re-released. Dr. Luigi is different. Like, there's no L blocks in the original Dr. Mario. Like, all the blocks are the same shape. So... And then, like, the other Dr. Mario games, like, they, they all have their own differences. Like, I think like the, the mobile one, one has the, it, they added two new colors and they have this, like, touch control, like, kind of, of like, things. slime effect thing happening. 
Yeah, the touch controls kind of break break the the Doctor Mar like the Charmer Doctor Mario for me. Like it's too it's too simplistic. Like you can put blocks literally wherever you want just by dragging them and putting them there. But like the original Doctor Mario to me is still like that's the best. That's by far the best game in the series. I guess so. I just light. I just I, like I've played Doc. I've played all the Doctor Mario games and like. I don't think any of them are necessarily better than other ones. Like, I feel like they are pretty much all the same. And I just don't see what the point of, like, a modern gamer going back to play that specific Dr. Mario over, like, the newer ones is really, other than just the novelty of saying this was the first one, right? Like, sure, Zelda might not hold up to modern Zeldas, but there's still a unique experience within that. There's still, like, a reason to play it that's different than what you can get now. Whereas with Dr. Mario, there really isn't because that game doesn't change. It's like Tetris. Like, what's the point of going back to play the original Game Boy Tetris versus playing, like, one of the modern Tetrises? There really isn't, right? Well, no, but Tetris Effect is a different experience. But, like, what's the difference of playing, like, the Game Boy Tetris versus just, like, a Tetris in your browser? Or, like, on your... Yeah, it's like, is there really a reason other than saying, I'm playing the first Tetris? At the end of the day, you're playing the same game, True. and that's that's where I'm like I like as much as I agree that Doctor Mario maybe was important to NES. I think when we've changed this framework of like recommending people to go back to the consoles to play these games, I don't know like if there's a reason to go back and play the NES Doctor Mario game unless you've never played a Doctor Mario game before and you really just want to play the first one. Yeah. Like if you've played Doctor Mario already on any console. There's no reason to go back and play Dr. Mario NES. You've played the game. Now we're at four. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, because I thought we were going to stop at five. Yeah, but now like, we're I saying think, if we don't I include think... Zelda or Dr. Mario, we're at we're at four. Well, yeah. that's the thing. Like, I think we should... I think five is a good number to have. So, like, it's literally just, like... If you think Dr. Mario should be... Like, we should just settle. It's Dr. Mario or Zelda. Like... Yeah. Well, the thing is, though, like, I originally was going to say, like, hey, maybe we should throw Metroid in there for the sake of argument, but no, Mega Man kind of scratches I'm that sorry. same I'm sorry, Metroid 1 yeah. is not good. I would yeah, never, like, I agree. I, there's no reason to go yeah, play that, that game. Just play Zero Mission. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Do you, it, how do you, do you guys want to, like, do a vote? Do you want to? We can do a vote if you guys want to. Like, you, you, could, you could toss a coin between, like, Zelda or Dr. Mario in this case, right? Um, I do think, like, there's something more, like... I agree with you with the whole point of like Legend of Zelda wasn't like like compared to modern Zelda games it's like definitely on the lower end of the stick but I don't know I I still think like that offers something unique to that system and like if you want to appreciate the roots of like modern adventure games like that's where you're finding it and I think there's just something about it right like it's like it's like playing Tetris to understand the roots of like a lot of puzzle games right Yep. So I feel like there's there's something there. And maybe it's not it being necessarily the greatest gaming experience, but maybe it's just the appreciation of the roots. So if we're going for like a modern playability stance, you'd keep Dr. Mario, but if you're talking about like appreciating roots, you'd keep Legend of Zelda. Yeah. So let's just say that either of those we're not saying that they're super essential, but they're definitely good plays. But yeah. they're ones that we're saying are essential. Our essential NES games. I still think The Legend of Zelda is essential, though. But that's okay, what we're saying. Fine. So should we? That's okay, fine. So let's no, no. Okay. If you have to pick five, like that's it. You, you and Gino pick pick Zelda. Okay. That's the one that takes the fifth sure. spot. Okay. The so there we go. So we got our list. So yeah. for our viewers at home, or our listeners at home, the five most essential NES games that we would like you to go and play is Super Mario Bros. 3, what we all kind of agree is the best Super Mario Bros. game on the system. Potentially, maybe in a later podcast, we can break this down. I'm sure some of us, or maybe all of us, believe it might even be the best 2D Mario in general. Um, So definitely go play that. Legend of Zelda as an appreciation for the roots of the adventures game genre. Punch-Out! for its um, focus on timing and trial and error and it's just fun aesthetic. Um, and then Kirby's Adventure, which we think is one of the more complicated, um, as well as just like... Underrated. 
like like underrated, but it's also just like the the setting and the world is just so wonderful. Like the way that it utilizes boss battles and mini games, like it's such a fantastic um different kind it of takes platformer. Advantage of the hardware. Yeah, definitely takes advantage of the hardware. And then Mega Man 3, if you're looking for something like um like a platformer that offers something of a challenge, offers a little bit more of a narrative, um, as well as has like incredible music. Um so and characters. So those are those are our five for you. I'm pretty satisfied with that. Yeah. 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 Well, I think we've talked about this for like a good like 45 minutes. That's a good strong episode. Um we weren't sure if NES as a discussion was gonna carry us for a full episode, but it seems like it has. I was pleasantly so, surprised. Yeah, so and trust me, if we talk this long about NES you just wait till we get to some of the later consoles. We oh will, gosh, Super Nintendo will be N64. Oh god, GameCube. Those are gonna be rough. I um, can, I can. I'm already getting, I'm already getting visions of just why we're going to pick say, Ocarina of Time. Why no, we're stop, picking stop, Ocarina stop, of Time? Stop, 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 stop. <laughs> don't, don't spoil anything. What <laughs> we can say is, it depends on who is in that podcast. Yep. How easily we come to a unanimous decision on yeah. the five essentials. Yes. Is it but... easily or very easily? <laughs> <laughs> I guess this is a good place to leave it. Thanks for making it this far into the video. If you like what we do here, why not give us a like or a subscribe if you're on YouTube or download our podcast and follow us on Spotify. That's where you can catch us always. Uh, next time, I think we're doing a Super Nintendo video. Is that right, Mateo? Well, that would be the next console we talk about, but I'm not sure if it'll be our next video, our next episode. Yeah, whatever, we can figure it out. Anyway, thanks for making it this far. Uh, like, subscribe, do all that jazz. Uh, unless you're a Geno fan, we don't want you here if you are. Anyway, see ya.